Hi everyone, welcome back to Give as Academy. In today's session, we are going to discuss a very important topic, which is you know first API life cycle stage, which is recommended by USOC. We call it design first approach or API led approach. So let's start with this session. Before that, I encourage everyone to please subscribe the channel, share with your friend, hit the like button, hit the bell icon so that you get you know notification to all upcoming videos. Okay, let's start. So let me set the you know topic first. So our topic here it is you know design first approach or in other words we call it API led approach. Okay. So first we'll set the context. So let me. Okay. So this will be our topic today. Okay. So before you know going in deep, let's set the characters. So who all will be involved in this design first approach or API led approach? Okay. So first, definitely will be we need a character called any point design center. Okay. We can write this API specification in any point studio also. So I would say or I would say any point studio okay so we can write from the uh any point studio 7.5 we can write it is specific inside or in point studio as well okay so this is the first character second character definitely we need to have a exchange a marketplace where we'll be where we'll be publishing our content so we'll say any point exchange okay a marketplace or to make this asset asset means here our API specification to the uh, to a, a place a centralized place where you know other team members or even outside you know of our any point platform can see the API specification and utilize the mocking service feature and test it so this will be your second character okay third character it will be our IDE which is our any point studio so I'll just say Third character is any point studio. This will be our desktop ID. Okay, it's Eclipse based. We can say the wrapper on top of Eclipse. And then fourth character will be so it can be your runtime plane. Okay, so definitely we'll be considering all the deployment options here. But for, for today, I'll just talk about the cloud hub. So this one will be either your cloud hub or on-prem, or it could be RTF, your runtime package. Okay. So this will be your fourth character. Okay. Let's see the responsibility of each and each and every character over here. So, okay, we'll start with the any point design center. So, in any point design center, right? So, the main responsibilities of this guy, let me drag the text box here. So, here we talked about API designer, API console, mocking service. These are the responsibilities API designer, or we can say the features available over here. API designer, API console, mocking service. And what we do here in the API designer? So we do so here we write the complete, or we can say, you know, design complete blueprint of our API. Okay, so what we we uh, generally do here, we decide resources. We decide HTTP methods on that resource. We decide on inputs. Inputs could be your query parameter, URI parameter. Headers, 
we decide responses. In response, we decide response codes. We decide data structure for input as well as for, for the request as well as for response. We decide media types. Media types over here. We decide, you know, we use mock data here. Mock data is really important. Without mock data, your AP station won't make any sense. Okay. Only with the mock data, we can see that, okay, how your request looks like, how your response looks like. Okay. The mock data is really, really important. It comes in the form of examples. We use your security schemes. We do fragmentation here. So the most famous fragment here is trade. Header trade, error responses. So air trades are like you know common you know function which keeps the common properties of your resource methods. Okay. We do a lot of documentation here. Documentation. So these all things you know we decide in the APS vision. And this all these things come together and give you a blueprint of your API. Okay, so this is the responsibility of the API designer to give me a blueprint. Okay, and these are the features API designer, API consultant, marketing can use to build this blueprint. Okay, once you build this blueprint, what you do? You publish it to the exchange. So what we can do here? You publish it to the publish it to the with a proper version. So here we mentioned version. It could be your so initially we start with a dot b dot c. Here, if I want to give example, we generally start with one dot zero dot zero. So your a will be your major version, b will be a minor version, c is your patch. Okay, and we call it semantic version in this format. The syntax a dot b dot c, we call it semantic version. Okay, once you publish this to a any point exchange, what is the responsibility of any point exchange? Okay, so let's let's talk about it. So let me for you. Once you publish it to the exchange, what are the responsibilities of the exchange? So what we do here? So we get here. So we get API portal. It could be by default if you're private, we can make it public. Okay. API console with the help of API console, we can test the API special API blueprint. Okay, and we can see the exact what header parameters, what query parameters, what URI parameters, what credentials is supposed to pass, what is required, what is optional. All these things will be visible in exchange. Okay. Here we get a mocking service as well. Other than this, behind the scene, when we publish this, our asset to our exchange, behind the service, few AWS service will be running and those will be creating, those will be creating for us, let's say, I have published RAML, then it will generate, you know, open API specific documentation for me. If I am publishing OS, then it will generate automatically RAML for me. Okay, so whichever you know language you have written your API question and you publish that to exchange, associate it, transform. Okay, language like you know, if you are creating OS, RAML will be generated for you. If you are publishing RAML, then OS will automatically generate for you. Other than this, 
you will get so basically other than this you get new connector also and it will be a mu3 or mu4 mu3 and i would say mu4 both connectors will be created over there okay now so these are the things happen when you publish to a exchange now once you publish to the exchange what the next step you go ahead and either from the designer or from the exchange okay so let me properly you import this you import import certificate as i said and as an instance either we can import it from the exchange or directly from the design center okay so what we do in any point exchange what all things will be getting generated by default when we import this specification in our any point tool okay so there will be a api kit plugin okay that runs behind the scene automatically for us so let me introduce new thing api kit plugin and this reads okay it reads the api specification for us and generates or we can say scaffold okay scaffolding okay and give you empty flows empty flows other than this automatically there will be a error handling validations we we'll get api implementation and this will be your default implementation okay? just like we do mocking these things will come automatically in our once we do the import now here we'll be connecting to actual source actual target because in api specification we just mention the mocking data now here we'll be actually connecting to our source and target source could be your sftp files you know it could be your tail source it could be your sap it, it could be your database similar way target system also will be similar set of you know systems now once you are done you do the testing over here do make m unit testing code testing and then after that we go ahead and we deploy to the one of the runtime layer okay either it could be cloud hub on prem or rt okay so basically you will be deploying your new application over here okay so this this when you are deploying new application a mule worker you know need up for you that mule worker is nothing but a aws is to instance and that instance will have it will have your mule runtime we are talking about cloud the right? so don't get confused with that stuff mule runtime so whichever version while deployment whichever version you have mentioned that like mule 4 or mule 3 or in mule 4 itself specific version and the you know you know your uh, processing uh, you know uh, capacity you mentioned like i want 0.1 vcore size based on that the memory will be you know allocated to this specific instance and then your mule on top of it your mule application will be running once this is done okay we go to fourth character which is our API manager. So here, I with the cloud of I I also mention the you know there will be a if we are using the S3 pipeline, then 
runtime manager won't come into picture but these are the real characters you know runtime manager okay and once you deploy and your application starts running in runtime plane one more character comes into picture which is your api manager and why api manager we apply the security governance okay so we apply security or another what we call it governance okay so here basically we apply the policies policies okay so to apply the policies we create api instances here okay on top of it we apply the policy okay so once so what i can say these two guys are you know i'll just go ahead and uh, add some these two guys go and hand in hand these two guys go hand in hand if you want to apply the security on top of your you know on top of your business logic definitely you need to take help of the api manager once okay so once your application is running so what i can say again uh, draw a line from here as well as we can only take help here and we take the api auto discovery id from here and then we need to get the connection okay now once once your designing is done once your publishing is done you implement it you deploy it in whichever you know runtime plane you are looking for or interested runtime plane and you apply this here now comes a part of final character which is your consumer so consumer will come and he wanted to consume your api okay so let's say api consumer very important character if you deploy your application if you don't have any consumer what's the point of having your api over there right so api consumer where you will find the details about your api this guy will go to your exchange so let me connect in a different way let's go with this part it will go to your exchange and it will I'm just going to stop this. Okay. So what I'll say. Okay. E or T or any API. Doesn't mean in E or T. API. Okay. First, discover. So look for a specific API. Then. If that API is secure, then put a access request. Once you get that access request, he will be either the access request is manual or approved, uh, manual or automatic. Based on this behavior, he will get credentials, and then by using those credentials, he will be consumer. He will try accessing the API. Okay, so this is the complete journey. You know, you'll see when you follow design first approach, which is recommended by Nimsa. Okay, it's not necessary that you need to go to the design designer and write first API. If you can, you can directly go and start implementing all. But that is not recommended by Nimsa. Nimsa recommends first go to your design center or any point studio, write the specification. Publish it to the exchange so that will be available for other consumers, and then you start implementing it and connect to actual source and target. Okay, and then you deploy to the runtime plane, secure or apply governance policy on that uh, business logic, and then finally your consumer will start consuming it. Okay, so this this design first approach is uh, it's applicable to either experience API, process API, or system. You need to follow this, you know, standards. Uh, whichever API you are planning to implement or use. Okay. Hope you liked it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe the channel. Please share with your friends. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon. And uh, see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.